Hello and welcome to On The Wrist. Today I have a review of my Bulova Makina Sport. I'm an absolute sucker for rubber straps, rectangular chronograph pushers, and the color blue. This was a bit of an impulse buy on my part, but I've really come to love this watch, and so I wanted to share with you all the awesome information about it. This full review will cover the design details, technical specs, and we'll do some wrist shots. So without further ado, after a quick introduction, we'll get right into it. So as I mentioned in the introduction, this is my personal watch. I own this, and it was a bit of an impulse buy. I tried it on at Macy's uh, and just really got quite taken with it and then bought it on eBay later for cheaper. So let's go over some of the design details first, then get into the technical specs. Now, normally I'm not a fan of quartz watches, but one thing that I really, really like about this watch and appreciate from a design perspective is check out that second sub dial. If you'll notice so far, it has hit almost dead on every single second indicator. I'm gonna throw this up in the left portion of the screen while we talk about some other things, but watch that because you can see it very nearly hits each second mark all the way around the dial, which is something I haven't seen in a lot of quartz watches and I really appreciate aesthetically. So if you look at the YouTube video put out by Bulova regarding this watch, they have it booked as an automotive, almost like as if the wheel of a sports car. And I do see that with this sport look, it's much sportier. Um, I do get automotive vibes, and what I love about this watch is the dial. There are so many different levels to the dial. If we start on the outwards working in, the minute markers coming down are slanted, the indices are applied, it comes down to the several different finishes and patterns on the dial as well. The outermost ring has these grooved slots, whereas then you come into the vertical grain on the almost like V-shaped going down into the uh, second subdial down there. And then these subdials themselves each have concentric circles. There's a lot of different levels to this dial, a lot of depth, and there's just a lot going on that really catches the eye and draws you in. Additionally, I love the splash of blue with the chronograph seconds hand being blue, and then radiating outwards, the black case, which is stainless steel, but has that beautiful black coloring. And then of course, the gorgeous blue rubber strap and rectangular chronograph pushers, which I really enjoy. I think they're the easiest to operate and just look so much cooler than circular pushers. Now, let's go over some of the technical specs. So this watch is 46 millimeters in diameter, which is fairly large for me, but the thickness, I, I would guess at about 12 millimeters. The case is a stainless steel with black paint around it. The movement is a 6S11, a quartz chronograph movement with an accuracy of plus or minus 15 seconds per month. The water resistance value is 100 meters, and there is loom on the hands and indices. Let's get a couple shots on the wrist. But real quick, let's check what time it is. It looks like it's time to like and subscribe. Did you know that less than 3% of viewers are actually subscribed to the channel? So if you are enjoying this video and like my content, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button because it will significantly help this video in the YouTube algorithm. But thank you for watching and let's get back to the review. Here we have it on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. So this at 46 millimeters is much larger than I normally go, uh, but I just love this rubber strap. And you can see here, I'm about halfway through the strap. So there's plenty of room to be, have a larger wrist or smaller wrist with this strap. Very comfortable. Um, and you can see here, even though it's a much larger size, because it has sort of a downturn into the integrated rubber straps, it actually sits kind of nicely size-wise on the wrist. Definitely on the bigger size, but very comfortable to wear and also very legible. One minor negative about these straps is because they have all these little grooves, which look great. If you're wearing a sweatshirt, it might grab some of the lint from inside the sweatshirt and really it, it kind of clings to the strap. So it's really hard to clean. I've tried to clean this a couple times and haven't had success getting the grooves completely clean. This doesn't look so bad in normal lighting, but under this harsh light I have here for filming, you can really highlight how much stuff gets in there. There is a second color option, as you can see here. Uh, which has green instead of blue as a secondary color. Now let's talk MSRP and value. MSRP of this watch is 495 US dollars. Now, since this is a Bulova and they're carried at most department stores, you can reasonably expect to get at least 20% off this. I think the actual sale price rate I see sometimes is selling price of about 325 to 350 US dollars. So I'm going to be ignoring the MSRP for this one because it's such a department store watch. And for that 350 
$1,000 price point, I think this is on track with the feature set. I would have loved a Mecha Quartz movement instead, but of course, this does have a lot of going for it with the Sapphire Crystal, as well as the integrated rubber strap and these rectangular pushers. The visual design of this watch has a lot going for it. I think that effort they put into that, in addition to, as I mentioned, the Sapphire Crystal and these integrated rubber straps, do sit it where I would expect for that price point. It might be a little on the pricier end of that, but I think it's not too far out of the realm of reasonable. So overall, I think the cost to feature ratio is there, and certainly I really enjoy the look of this watch. So for me, this sits well-priced for what it's worth, well-priced being at that about 350 US dollars or, or less. And obviously that means if it was only available at the MSRP of 495, I think this would be overpriced for the feature set. Visual design is great, but at close to $500, I would expect a little more feature-wise. And my overall takeaway from this watch is I've really enjoyed it. This checks a lot of boxes off for me design-wise, and it wasn't too expensive. It was a bit of an impulse buy, as I said, but I've enjoyed it so far and I would certainly recommend it to anyone who's interested in it as a watch. Reasonable value, good feature set, and a lot of style. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what you think about this watch. Do you like integrated rubber straps? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. That's been all for me today. This is On The Wrist. Thank you for watching.